Hello everybody, to introduce myself, my name is Alex, and this is Reef Fishes and Whatnot. So today I'm going to be giving an overview of the care, diet, habitat, phylogeny, and other fun tidbits about Enchidna catenata, also known as the chain link eel. These along with snowflake eels and zebra eels are one of the more common types of eels kept in a reef or marine aquarium because of the fact that they only grow 2 feet in length and their natural hunting instincts can be suppressed by regular feedings and then by doing this they won't be able to hunt our large and precious expensive fish. So Enchidna catenata is found among reefs and rocky shores in the Bahamas, Antilles, the Bermuda, Florida, Brazil, and a few accounts near West Africa. So first, let's look at the phylogeny of Enchidna catenata. First, it belongs to the order Anguliforms. This order is designated for all eels. This breaks up into various families, all of which aren't shown here, but for example, Congridae, where the conger eels belong to, Angulidae, where the freshwater eels belong to, and Muranidae, the moray eels, of which Enchidna catenata belongs to. Muranidae also contains around 200 species of moray eels such as Gymnothorax funebris, the green moray eel, Enchidna nebulosa, the snowflake eel, and finally Enchidna catenata, all of which are sister taxa to each other. So in the wild, Enchidna catenata feeds on small fishes and crustaceans. They search for their prey at the bases of rocks and within crevices and holes among the reefs. They search so thoroughly when they're hunting that they only move 6 meters, or for the Americans, 18 give or take feet, within an hour. So to help suppress this instinct to hunt small fishes or crustaceans in your aquarium, it's advised to have regular feedings every other day or whenever you see your eel swimming against the glass looking for a meal. I personally use and recommend using various marine fishes that I buy frozen at my local Asian market which includes sardines, occasionally tilapia which is a freshwater cichlid so it shouldn't be a staple but once in a while a good treat, shrimp, squid, mussels, or anything of that sort. Remember it has to be a marine food and it has to be raw. Most eels in the pet trade will eat our prepared foods readily, but if an incident does occur where they won't eat, try feeding some live glass shrimp or fiddler crabs if your local fish store has any, and slowly wean the eel off of those and feed them the prepared foods. Like most eels, their eyesight is very poor and they rely on their scent for hunting. So when you feed the food, make sure you thaw it out and then stick it in the water column using a tweezers or a stick, and eventually the smell will radiate throughout the entire tank and the eel will pinpoint that and go after it. A characteristic of these eels and other eels is that they possess a second set of jaws called pharyngeal jaws. These are believed to be modified gill arches and they're utilized for pulling in prey into the throat. The best way I can describe this is it's like the second pair of jaws that xenomorphs possess in the Alien movie franchise. If you haven't seen Alien, I highly recommend seeing it. Um, it's the little internal jaw that comes out and grabs people's faces and they use it for all kinds of devastation. It's really cool. So here I made a little animation to describe the whole process. So first we have this little ugly and terribly drawn damselfish, but it's okay because most damselfishes besides clownfish are ugly as hell, so it's alright. The eel will use its first set of jaws to grab the prey and tear it up a little bit and uh, disable it, and then it's going to use its pharyngeal jaws to pull said prey into its throat. Normally these eels will hide among the rocks and will come out at night, being nocturnal, so it's very important that there are enough rocks and hiding spots for the eel. And it's super important that any rock structures that you have are structurally stabilized with putty or some kind of glue as the eel will move rocks and they'll dig underneath in the sand and they could cause a rock fall. It's recommended to house these eels in nothing smaller than a 125 gallon aquarium and to prevent having a dried eel on your floor, use some kind of covering and make sure there's no way for the eel to escape. Just like an octopus, eels are notorious for trying to escape, so if there's any large holes or anything that it can use to escape, it will get out. I highly recommend using Bulk Reef Supplies quarter inch net tank covering. I'll put a link in the description on how to set that up and where to get it. If you do have a situation where the eel has dried up after escaping the tank, there have been many cases where the owner has placed it back into the tank and within 48 hours it has come back from being eel jerky. For quarantining, it's best to use hyposalinity as a means for parasite eradication as any forms of copper, chelated, or ionized will kill the eel. 
The same procedure of 4 to 8 weeks of quarantining is recommended even though eels have a very thick slime coat and they will rarely show any external signs of ick or other parasites or flukes for example, but they will have them. So chain link eels will make a great addition to any aquarium and they're one of the top 3 eels that are considered reef safe in the reef aquarium. I hope that you found this video both informative and enjoyable. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, and if you were disappointed by my drawing of the damselfish, uh, you can leave your constructive criticism down below in the comments. So, so uh, thank you and have a good day.